Hi guys, my name is Alexey Andreev, I am a cinematographer, I shoot music videos and commercials and I'm very glad to welcome you on my channel. Today I would like to make a cinematography breakdown of a trailer of a film directed by Ilya Neischuller that came out just recently. I mean, at the time of shooting this video only the trailer came out. Anyways, I cannot wait to see the camera work, especially because it was filmed by the same cinematographer who was responsible for Midsommar, Pavel Pogorzelski. I liked that film. It was quite an unusual horror movie with a very bright picture. I think many people appreciated his cinematography there. Now we will see how he contributed to this new film. It is especially interesting because the director, Ilya Neischuller, is a fellow Russian. So let's go watch the trailer. We see the night scenes right from the start both indoor and outdoor, daylight scenes, the main character here and there, quite an eye-catching look he has here. Night again, a lot of night scenes, it feels like the most part of the film was shot during the night. Although the bus is illuminated, it's still happening in the night. Bad guys break into his house at night, Scenes in the twilight, night scenes again, night, night, night. Almost each scene shown takes place at night. Great! I think this breakdown will be an interesting one. Let's go! The first scene is a night scene. We can notice that some single source of a very strong light illuminates the entire scene. It stands on the left side quite distant from the scene itself as it creates long shadows from the fence, long shadows from the trees appear on the roof as well. We can see that the brightest area appears to be this one. These fixtures are reaching 70% brightness, but overall the entire scene is around 30%. Our character stands in a way that the side light provides a side key light. The rest are standing with their backs to us, so we mostly pay attention to the main character, to whom we will most probably be zooming in. And so it happens. It is a trailer, so it may be a completely different scene, the main character is standing face to the house. Still the same source of light is working here on the side. Of course it is now only illuminating the background. Yeah, the same source of light is illuminating the background, while here on the right there is definitely some kind of frost frame that provides this side key light. And from the back there is a touch of a soft light, something between a key light and a backlight, which accentuates some glares on the illuminated part of his skin. At the same time, the shadowed side is absolutely dark. There is no illumination in the background, no backlight to reveal the contour. The only thing that serves as backlight here is the police light bar that illuminates the shadowed part of his face just for once. Scenes in a dark indoor environment. We can see that the brightest area appears to be the window in the kitchen, about 30% bright. The walls inside are white, and this is quite problematic. When I shot a follower short film, I faced the same issue. I had to create a light filling in, in the facial part of the character. A touch of it just to make the face somewhat visible. And since the walls around were white, as soon as I installed an overhead source of light, all the walls became brighter than the face simply because the white of the walls is much brighter than the face. This is why we can clearly see that the walls in the scene are much brighter. It can be adjusted to a certain extent during color correction if needed. It depends on the task. The wall on the left is darker and it kind of works better for the scene. There's some soft overhead light. And through the window another source of light must be shining, providing those glares. 
or that source of light could be located in the corridor, shining from left to right and creating these reflections. It is interesting to note that in this scene, the policeman is standing in the exact point where our character was standing. It could be because those two scenes took place at different time. So, here we see a similar scheme. A soft key light on the right, that also reaches the shadowed part of the face because the actor turned his head a little bit towards the light. And again, the same source of light on the side located closer to a backlight position that illuminates his nose, emphasizes the illuminated part of his face. The same lighting on the left, the same light bar shining, the same tree in the background, the facial part is at around 38-50% of the overall brightness. Here is the scene from an opposite side, the point of view of the policeman. There is that same source of a strong landslide on the left that was illuminating the entire area. Judging by the second flare, there is a second source of light serving as key light. There is a split lighting again. And as a backlight motivation, there is this lantern. It could be there in the first place or it could be added. In any case, the actor stands in a spot which allows this lantern to be visible and work as a backlight. A scene in a twilight or an early morning. The sun has not come out yet. Or it could be simply a cloudy day. We can see that the entire frame is below 50% brightness. Even this scene, where the sky is visible, does not exceed 85-90% brightness. So nothing is maxed out in terms of brightness. And the black point is slightly higher here, which means there are no 100% black spots due to a higher contrast. Judging by how extremely the background is blurred, some anamorphic lens was used for this shot. That is what we love anamorphic lenses for. On a wide shot, the character's face is illuminated more uniformly because on the right it was impossible to use any kind of frame, plus a bus was approaching. I think that this scene was shot as is. But as we switch to a closer shot, we can notice that one side of the face is then brighter than the other. A black floppy could have been used for this. Or a black 8 feet or 12 feet frame, does not really matter. All of it helps make the right part of his face darker, to emphasize the contrast. Judging by the flare in the eye, some kind of light reflecting shield could be used perhaps to reflect the natural light and further emphasize the left part of his face. Also, the shadows on the right side could have been caused by the roof of the bus stop. This part of the roof could have been covered, while on the left the reflecting shield could be used to reflect the skylight, as I said before, in order to make the difference between the left and the right parts of his face more pronounced. If we look at the mug, we can see that something black is reflected on its right side, which could be the black frame or an advertising board here. But I think it was simply a black frame. A typical office light, quite simple. Most of the times, all the sources of light are located above. Walls are not being darkened. Here on the right, some kind of fixture could create that light spot and provide a backlight, while above the character there is a soft light. Because the character is quite dark, his skin is not pale white, his clothes are of a dark color, and because he's standing in front of the brighter background, the rhythm is present in this shot. We transition from a darker area to a brighter area several times, if this wall on the left was completely white without the window, the entire scene could have been looking strange. I think that this scene was shot under natural light conditions. There could be an overhead source of light directed at his face above the camera, while in the background there is a natural light typical for an evening. 
Not sure if they managed to use the sunlight to illuminate this area. Or there was a source of light imitating the sun, providing the backlight, the shadow. Judging by the shadow, the light is coming from here. Was it the sun? Don't know. It could be both sun and some kind of sky lift with a fixture located above to illuminate this area here, because I don't quite see any sunlit objects there, except for these cars on the left. And it seems to be reaching this area. So this part is illuminated by some kind of source of light located outside the frame, or it could be the sunlight indeed. Very hard to tell. An interesting top shot in the night here. There is a side light that touches the main character's face and creates light spots. They are especially noticeable here on the pillows, on the wife's hand and head. Basically, the entire light scheme involves one single source of light. And because the pillows and the clothes are dark, because the blanket is dark as well, it kind of swallows the light. A scene under an orange lantern. Due to the fact that the asphalt is wet, the ground is illuminated very beautifully. Plus, all these drops and wet areas always look better under a backlight, because the background is dark, while these wet spots are brightly illuminated and thus actually visible. And because we illuminate this wall, we can choose not to illuminate the actor and leave only his silhouette visible. As we switch to a closer shot, we can see that the main character is turned away from the source of light slightly, which is why there is a shadowed side on the left part of his face. A scene in the bus. The main character is at the very center. There are two lamps in the frame and judging by the reflection in the back window, we can tell that the one on the right shines brighter than the one on the left. The left is a little bit less bright. Due to this, the right side of the character is brighter. Perhaps the lamp outside the frame was simply turned off, so a single one was left working as half side light, half backlight. This one was turned off, while the one on the right remained turned on. That is why the right part is brighter. Although we see both lamps working in the window reflections, most probably simply because we see the reflection of the lamps located further away, while some lamps were indeed turned off or covered. Also, these lamps on the right could be dimmed slightly to decrease the brightness while the lamps on the left were not affected. This is quite a typical situation when the character's face is slightly turned away from these lamps here. Well, one lamp located here could be simply turned off. That explains why there is no backlight on this guy and why it does not over-illuminate the face here and here. So we leave this lamp in the back to serve as backlight. This row of lamps serves as key light for two guys in the back, as well as this guy in the front. Here another softbox could be located in order to create a side light. or that same effect could be obtained using the lamps on the right. We can see they were working by the shadow on the face of the guy standing on the right. This means that these lamps could be working and serve as key light. This scene illustrates that by simply switching some lamps on and off and without using extra sources of light, we can achieve a very good picture. This of course involves placing the actors correctly. In this frame, we can see that in the street behind the building, there was a source of light installed to illuminate the street. In addition, these lamps here provide some kind of rhythm. And the same source of light also illuminates the wall on the left. As we switch to a different angle, we see only one row of lamps. I'm pretty sure that the opposite row on the right was switched off. Therefore, we see the volume here, all these shadows on the right side of his face. If the row of lamps on the right was working, 
this part would be a lot brighter. So this lamp works as backlight and key light. These lamps also serve as backlight. Now I think that one single lamp on the right was actually working just to provide the filling in. But it's not the entire row that was working. Most probably one single lamp was left on, whereas on the left an entire row was working as backlight. An indoor scene in the daytime. A window on the left serves as key light, the second window behind the actor serves as key light for the boy. Under such conditions we can switch to close shots without any problem. We have the same window working as key light in this frame. And when we switch to a main character, one window is working as backlight, while the other, the one behind the boy, works as key light. So basically we're placing both actors in front of the windows so that one window would work as key light for one actor and the other for another actor. At the same time, the same windows serve as backlight. Here is an interesting scene. It seems that the gun is gripped to the camera and the camera is moving together with the gun while the guy grabs it. Looks epic. A classic interrogation scene. There is a source of a soft light with curtains that strike back the light directed at the background. The light reaches here, here as well slightly, and that's all. So there are curtains inside of which a source of light is installed that only illuminates the characters. That was all for today's breakdown, friends. I hope you liked it. And if you like this video, please consider subscribing to my channel. I also have another paid Boosty account with an exclusive content with more useful information for cinematographers where I review even more of my works, I share useful literature, light schemes and also review the works of my subscribers. We also have a private telegram chat where we have discussions, exchange ideas, ask each other questions and help each other. The atmosphere there is absolutely friendly in contrast to Facebook where people simply start throwing mud at you. There is a nice and friendly atmosphere and we can talk not only about cinematography. The guys discuss sound, SFX, art and whatnot. So please consider subscribing to my Boosty if you are interested. I am looking forward to see you in our private chat. See you in the next video. Till next time. Bye.